Hello again. As part of our online education success series, in this episode of the Explorations Learning Network, we'll be discussing the disadvantages of e-learning. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. In our last episode, we talked about all of the advantages to online learning, like convenience, socialization, working with diverse teams, safely exploring dangerous situations, tapping into a nearly unlimited source of knowledge, virtual exploration, and learning at a level. Despite all of these advantages, believe it or not, there are a few disadvantages to online education. According to Sean Chamberlain of Fullerton College, these include the need for additional time to complete an online course, the tendency towards procrastination, isolation from physical socialization, limitations to kinesthetic or touch-based learning, and finally, limitations attributed to the digital divide, such as access to electricity and internet connectivity. Let's examine all of these in detail. Let's begin with additional time to complete an online course. Some professional educators and other individuals point out that online education takes longer to complete due to the amount of reading and writing involved in each course. While it's true that online courses require students to read and write more email messages and posts on discussion forums, many online courses are moving toward the use of video to deliver content as a forum for instructor presentations and collaborative learning. The single greatest advantage of all the extra material, whether it be email messages, forum posts, or video lecture, is the ability for a student to review what they've read or watched. This is not typically possible in a face-to-face -face learning environment, unless you video the instructor's lecture. Stalker. <laughs> Chances are you won't need to because they already have all of their lectures on video as part of the online version of the class that you're sitting through. In addition, countless studies have showed that most people zone out when listening to other people speak for long periods of time. Wake up. Wake up. This problem can be avoided by chunking the video and throwing in quizzes and other activities. In addition to making the material more interesting and meaningful, it also improves student retention and overall understanding by demonstrating how the theory of the discussion can be applied to solving problems or examining an issue. But that doesn't mean online classes are easier than face-to-face -face classes. Remember, there is a great deal of work involved in completing an online class. If you don't keep up with the work, you could fall behind and may end up failing the course, which leads us to another disadvantage to online learning, procrastination. I don't really want to talk about that right now. Maybe we could talk about it tonight or tomorrow. Actually, thinking about it next Tuesday sounds a little bit better for me. One of the most significant problems with online learning is the tendency for the student to wait until the last minute to complete his or her work. Like none of us ever did that in class. <laughs> in a recent study conducted by researchers at Université de Rennes 2, students who procrastinated in online courses tended to post less often in discussion forums, deliberately isolating themselves from the rest of the participants. Many designers of online learning systems are addressing this problem by employing academic coaches, tutors, and advisors to keep the students on track with his or her participation in the class. 
In addition, many courses require that students participate in learning teams, which also forces them to interact with students and consequently improves both their time management skills and decreases their opportunity to procrastinate. According to a study conducted by Dougherty and Funk in 1998, students in online classes feel physically separated from their instructors. The researchers point out that although these feelings can be minimized, they cannot be completely eliminated. Other researchers indicate that it is important for online schools to create a sense of community for their students. Consequently, some schools require that online courses be conducted in a hybrid format. Hybrid courses require students to meet in a face-to-face -face setting at least once during the duration of their course. To create a sense of community, instructors use this face time to have students meet with members of their learning teams. This allows you to put a name with a face, especially for the people that you'll be talking to most, like your instructor and your teammates. When the course is completely online, other activities help students build a sense of community. Students taking online classes at the University of Phoenix are required to post a bio, a short essay about who they are and why they decided to return to school. Each student is then required to read at least two biographies from other students in the class and then post a response. Although not as effective as face-to-face -face meeting, this does help students create community and may minimize student isolation. Social isolation is not the only physical limitation associated with online classes. The virtual state or digital medium in which e-learning takes place does put limitation on learning that requires students to interact with real objects. This can be a problem in situations where students must touch or manipulate a real object, such as turning a dial or taking a pulse. However, the physicality of online learning is currently only limited by our technology. Many researchers and technology designers are working on methods which allow you to interact with real-world objects through a digital interface. This can be accomplished in a variety of ways and is most noticeable in online game systems such as the Nintendo Wii or the Xbox Kinect. Players can manipulate simulated controllers in the shape of a tennis racket or golf clubs or steering wheel to control the actions in the game. Or in the case of the Kinect, you don't even need devices. The popularity of these devices has even led to the development of physical education e-learning courses that actually make it possible for people to exercise in a variety of fun and exciting ways that they never may have thought possible. Another way that e-learning is taking on the real physical world is through augmented reality. Augmented reality allows you to interact with the real world through the assistance of the virtual world. For example, parking assistive devices or rear mounted driving cameras that help your car park itself. Companies like BMW are experimenting with augmented reality to assist mechanics in the repairs of cars. Typically, augmented reality requires you to wear devices that improve the interface between you and the virtual world, items such as 3D glasses. But even children's toys such as Disney's App Mates, which allow kids to use the characters from the movie Cars, like Mater, to interact with games on the iPad. Children can even manipulate figurines of the Sesame Street characters Bert and Ernie to explore their 3D apartments. Or, thanks to National Geographic and UPC apps, the opportunity for mall shoppers to interact with a T-Rex and raptors and dolphins and even a cheetah. Finally, one of the greatest disadvantages to online education is that created by the digital divide or as researchers DiMaggio and Hargitay at Princeton University call it, digital inequality. Digital inequality refers to those situations where people from a more privileged group have access to the internet, while people from a less privileged group don't have the same level of access. 
For example, some children have access to smartphones and digital tablets, computers, and the internet, both at home and at school. While other children and even adult learners may only have access at school, this limited access is further restricted by the type of content available in these locations. People on the downside of the digital divide do not have the same freedom of access to the internet content as those people who can afford the cost of high-speed internet connection. This is a serious problem in a world that depends more and more on the internet as a source of information and education. Many policymakers, professional educators, social activists, and even entrepreneurs are working to eliminate the disparities or inequalities created by the digital divide. In fact, thanks to a Department of Labor grant, anyone with access to the internet can learn about online education through the 22 episodes of this Explorations Learning Network series about online education success. Just one of the ways that we're trying to break down the digital divide. Wow, these don't sound like disadvantages. And in many cases, we only have to wait for technology to overcome some of these issues. Don't ever let the digital divide prevent you from learning. If you can't take an online class at home, visit your library or go to your local college and get online. But no matter what, figure out a way to learn. It's the best way to get ahead in life. Till next time. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.